The hype behind the 2023 QB class is well documented at this point. There's at least four quarterbacks who will be in contention for QB1 in most classes. You got two former five stars, including a Heisman winner, who's pretty important to this video, a bunch of rocket arms, and possibly the most physically talented QB prospect of all time. Yet the most highly regarded by many is the guy who least fits the typical mold of a top QB. There's no denying his production in college, but in a class of prototypical passers and generational athletes, what makes Bryce Young so special? And was he really worth the number one pick in the draft? Well, to put it bluntly, yes. Yes, he was. Move the pocket ever so slightly. The deep over for Ja'Cory Brooks. Julius Brintz is 6'4". But before we get into all that, be sure to like the video if you enjoy this kind of content so I know to make more. And don't forget to subscribe and click the bell icon to get notified whenever I upload. I'm, uh, still working on consistent uploads, so you're honestly pretty likely to miss new videos otherwise. Or, you know, you could follow me on Twitter, if you're really cool. But enough of all that, let's get back to the video. Young's most obvious strength, and the one you've probably heard the most about, is his elite pocket presence. In fact, I'd go as far as to say he has some of the best pocket presence you'll see from a college prospect. I'm talking top 10 in the NFL from day one good. He has a great feel for pressure, which helps him maneuver efficiently while keeping his eyes downfield. Here's a great example from that crazy game against Texas. The Longhorns dial up a corner blitz, but Young calmly avoids the pressure and hits the dig in stride just before getting sacked. Switching to the end zone angle, you can see him quickly diagnose the rush, and there's no wasted movement as he slides right and steps up to buy time for that dig to come open. Even in arguably his worst game of the season against LSU, that pocket presence was still on display. It's 3rd and 10 and the Tigers drop 8 in the coverage. Even with just a 3 man rush, BJ Ojolari quickly forces Young to step up. He then looks to escape the pocket, but seeing the nose shed outside, he resets inside and finds his running back improvising over the middle for a first down. Young knows he's better off staying in the pocket where the whole field is still in play rather than rolling out and taking the boundary side out of the picture. Or shit, even if no one came open, look at all that space he now has to run. And then of course there's this insane play from later in the game. It's once again 3rd and 10 with about 5 minutes left in the game and Bama's down too. The Tigers are bringing the heat with a 6 man rush but Young stays tall in the Okay, maybe tall isn't the right word for him, but he stays up as long as possible before the pressure eventually forces him on the move. And move he does, somehow navigating this total mess in the backfield, shedding a tackle and hitting his receiver open behind the defense for six. Now I think we can all recognize this is a hell of a highlight, but Young's vision and pocket awareness are what made it all possible. You can see right as he starts to scramble, he sets up three to commit outside, opening up some room. He then hits the brakes again, using the oncoming rusher's momentum against them to escape right, and then the rest is easy, he's just gotta make the throw. Okay, so his pocket presence is great and all, but that's just one trait that sets him apart. As far as I'm concerned, Bryce Young's biggest X factor is his general awareness. His football IQ and natural feel for the game are some of the best I've personally ever scouted. He seriously plays like he's got that Madden camera angle. Take this play from the 2021 SEC Championship. Georgia gets pressure with a loop stunt, forcing Young on the move, but instead of just sprinting out of the pocket, he's able to quickly stop and step up, which now leaves only one defender with even a chance at a sack. He then slips away from that one defender, some guy named Trayvon Walker, to keep the play alive, and knowing he still has his running back outside, flips the ball out to him. The linebacker's already committed to Young since 99% of QBs are just scrambling here, so Brian Robinson now has free reign to take off and pick up a first down, with a little extra help for good measure. Here's a more subtle example from 2021 against Texas A&M. The defense is playing your standard cover three and Bama is running an arrow and dig to the boundary. Watch Young open his hips as if he's throwing the arrow, which gets the curl flat defender to bite, opening up the window to hit the dig behind him. It's simple, but that's a veteran move from a guy who was just 20 years old at the time. What, you want something more impressive? Fine, I got you. On this play, the Aggies are dropping eight out of a one high look pre-snap. But after the snap, they're going to drop into what looks to me like an exotic form of cover 6. Once he gets the snap, Young looks play side and recognizes the slot corner hauling ass to stay over top of this vertical, with the outside corner keying the number 2 and a safety dropping into a hook zone. That's not a great look, so he checks the backside fade, sees it could probably squeeze a throw to Mechie, and does just that. Granted, this did end up an incomplete pass, but you really can't ask for a much better throw.
but I think the best play to highlight Young's awareness comes from the Arkansas game later that year. He stays in the pocket as long as possible, never dropping his eyes, before he eventually has to climb up to avoid pressure. Now, he could take off here, but he's probably getting stopped short of the goal line. I mean, he's a dangerous scrambler, but he ain't Lamar Jackson. Instead, he checks his receiver near the sideline, sees the only defender with a chance of tackling him has already committed to stopping the scramble, and flicks it out to him for six. The defense was pretty much all over this play and they still gave up a touchdown. That's what makes Bryce Young dangerous. I really need to emphasize, this is not a normal play. First of all, there's the poise to stay calm in the pocket and not force a dangerous throw in the red zone on just second and 10. But even after that, after climbing up in the pocket, the ability to stay calm, still scan the field, keep in mind this linebacker is like a yard away from him, and then to be able to contort his body and just flick out the throw underneath like that. This is not normal. Most QBs aren't even thinking to make that throw, let alone scanning the field, recognizing that throw as an option, and then hitting that throw. So uh, yeah, Bryce Young has pretty good awareness. Now as great of a prospect as I think he is, he's not perfect. While his ability to extend plays is amazing, sometimes he extends a little too long. And Young's accuracy can be pretty inconsistent, as one second he's hitting dimes down the sideline, and the next he's dirting unpressured throws. Some of this is due to his rush delivery at times, but I think a primary reason for this is his arm strength, or lack thereof. Not to say he has a weak arm, because he doesn't. He can make just about any throw in structure, it's only when he's rolling out or the pressure closes in that his arm strength really starts to fail him. I also think that's why he pretty much always puts his whole body into throws, though I'm not really concerned about that in particular since he still has a quick release. But I'm really not sure lackluster arm strength is that big a deal in a world where Joe Burrow is the second best QB in the league. Like as you can see, he can make throws downfield, that's not the problem. To me one of the main benefits of having a cannon for an arm is that once the play breaks down or if you're late on a read, you can still drill a throw into a tight window or make a crazy off-platform throw. But Bryce Young doesn't really need to make those throws too often because he's usually not late on throws. He's usually hitting everything on time anyway. You can make up for a weaker arm as long as it doesn't actively limit the playbook and I firmly believe Young does just that. Now you're probably wondering why I haven't brought up Young's size yet. While I'd be lying if I said I wasn't at least a little concerned about how his body will hold up, I do think it's a pretty overblown quote unquote issue. Before the hits can start adding up, you have to actually hit him first, and that's much easier said than done. I mean, just ask these defenders. If anything, his tiny frame just makes it harder to get a hold of him. Not to mention, he's gotta be made of play though, the way he'd be contorting his body to avoid sex. I think he's pretty similar to Devonta Smith in that jamming him, or sacking him in this case, should be pretty easy. The hard part is actually getting your hands on him. With his short area quickness packaged in such a tiny frame, good luck even being able to grab him in the first place. Plus if anything, he'll be more protected in the NFL than in college. With all the new rules and roughing the passer calls and everything in place to protect the quarterback in the NFL, he's probably faced harder hits in the SEC than he ever will at the next level. So while it's almost crazy to not at least be a little concerned about his potential durability, I'm betting it doesn't really hold him back. Long story short, Young may not be 6'3 or have a crazy arm, but all the little things add up to make a damn good prospect. He's still a great athlete and he has all the intangibles you want in a franchise QB. By all accounts, he's a great teammate and leader too, so despite being 5'10", his teammates will probably still look up to him. Bryce Young may not be in that Joe Burrow or Trevor Lawrence tier prospects, but I really don't think he's far behind.